All right then gang, and welcome to your very first Firebase Cloud Functions tutorial. Now, just really quickly before we start the tutorial, for those of you who want to support the channel and join the gang officially, you can do it by clicking that join button right here. It's just 99 cents or pence per month, and you get these cool little ninja loyalty badges next to your name in the comments down below when you leave a comment. You can also join by clicking the button right beneath the video if you're watching one now, which I'm guessing you are, it does exactly the same thing. All right, so now that's out of the way, let's get on with the tutorial. So then, for those of you who've been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll already know that I'm a fan of Firebase and I've done a lot of Firebase tutorials over the last couple of years. Now, you might already know what Firebase is, but for those of you who don't, basically Firebase is a backend as a service. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean it allows us to do something called serverless computing. And that means we don't have to set up our own server to build apps or websites and we can use Firebase service and services to do that instead. And we can use services like the database or authentication or hosting or cloud storage. And we only need to use the bits that we need for our apps or sites. So we can use all of these different Firebase features and more for our sites and apps. And we don't have to set up our own server to manage all of this. Now, even though that's great, sometimes you want to write your own server-side code to maybe add roles to users or to validate data or to react to changes in your database, basically to run any kind of code that you don't want to run on the front end. Now, that's kind of hard to do if we're using a serverless approach because we don't have a server to do that on. So Firebase made cloud functions to allow us to do this. And that basically means that we can write code that runs server-side on Firebase servers. And that code can interact with other Firebase services like the database or authentication or storage, etc. And each bit of code that we write is packaged up into a function and deployed to Firebase. Now, each function can do something different. So for example, we could have a new user that signs up to our app or website using Firebase authentication. Now you might want to create a record in the database for that user, but sometimes you don't want to allow database write access from the front end over here. You want to do that from the server. So what you could do is write and deploy a cloud function to do that instead. So the function would listen for new user signups and trigger whenever that event happens to create a database record for that user. Now, there's many different use cases for cloud functions, and we're going to see a few different ones in this series. Now, just quickly, Firebase cloud functions run in a Node.js environment on Firebase service, and that means that we can write our functions in JavaScript or TypeScript. Now, I'm going to be using JavaScript for this course. However, all the same theory and procedures will apply for TypeScript as well. Okay then, so I'm just gonna give you a quick demo of the project that we're gonna create throughout this course while we learn about Firebase functions. So first of all, I'm gonna register as a new user. And to do that, I'll say toad at the net ninja.co.uk. And by the way, toad is a Mario character. Uh, the password, I'll just say test one, two, three, and I'm gonna register. Once I've registered, I can see that we have a list of tutorial requests that different registered people can make, and each one has the number of upvotes. So I can upvote things like so, and it's going to take a second to do that at first because when you first invoke a Firebase function, it does take a minute to do, but you can see eventually it goes to three and it goes to the top. So the most upvoted tutorials go to the top and the least voted go down below. Now, like I said, that took a little while to do, but when you start to use your functions more, the more a function is used, it becomes quicker. So for example, if I upvote this one, it's gonna be a little bit quicker now. You'll see that go to two pretty much straight away. So we can do that and add new requests. So I'm gonna click on add request and I need to think of something that we're gonna add now. So let's just say view and Laravel and submit request. And then we see that one at the bottom as well has zero votes to begin with. But if I try and upvote it, I can do, and it's going to go to one. Now, each user can only upvote something once. So if I try to upvote this again, it's not going to let me do that. And I get a little notification saying that. So that's cloud functions in action. And we'll see all of that later on.
So this is what we're going to be building as we go forward. But before you start, I would recommend that you already understand about Firebase authentication because this uses Firebase authentication. And I'm not going to go into great detail about how that works. I would expect you to know the basics already. So if you want to learn more about that, I've got a whole playlist all about Firebase authentication right here on this channel. The link to that is going to be down below. So definitely check out that first of all. Also, to store all the data, we're going to be using Firebase Firestore databases. And again, you should already know about that because I'm not going to go into great depth about the intricacies. So if you want to learn that first of all, which I do recommend, check out this playlist. That's Firebase Firestore tutorial, complete tutorial from beginning to end. That is on this channel as well. I'll leave the link down below. A final list, kind of a given, but I would expect you to know a little bit about JavaScript as well. Asynchronous code, functions, all that jazz. If you want to learn JavaScript, I've got a great introduction to it here, modern JavaScript tutorial. And I'll leave the link to that down below as well. Finally, you do need Node.js installed on your computer to work with Firebase. We're going to be using the Firebase CLI later. And to use that, we need Node and the Node Package Manager installed. So if you've not already, go to nodejs.org and download it right here. And finally, all of the course files for this series are going to be right here on GitHub at this repo, Firebase Functions. This link is going to be right down below as well. And each lesson in this series has different codes. So each lesson has its own branch on this GitHub repo. So if you want to see the code for lesson eight, for example, go to the branch drop down and go to lesson eight, and you're going to see all of the code right here. Okay. So there we go, my friends. That is your introduction to Firebase functions. So I really, really hope you enjoy this series. If you do, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. That really means a lot. And if you really want to support the cause, you can do by joining the channel right here. Just click on this join button and you can join for 99 pence or cents per month, depending on where you live. And you get a nice little badge next to your name in the comments as well. But anyway, I'll see you in the very next tutorial where we're going to set up Firebase in our project.